Hey, Mr. Z, how's it going? Going well, Mr. B, how are you? I'm doing great. You ready to do this? I'm ready. Let's get started. All right, we're talking about weathering and erosion today, and uh, we're going to be focusing on... Uh, defining what that means, weathering, mass wasting, and erosion. Yeah. Uh, relationship between weathering, wa mass wasting, and erosion. And then identifying important agents involved in chemical and physical weathering, so breaking down weathering as well. And I think we'll just be talking about the physical weathering, right? Yeah, for yeah. this video we will. All right, so real basic definition, weathering, uh, just breaking down of materials in place. Yeah, and if we think about weathering and weather, right, we're, we're talking about the surface of the earth. Okay. All right. Uh, we're also uh, going to mention erosion here, but we're not going to go into any more depth with it uh, in the videos. But uh, once that material is kind of broken down by mm -hmm. that weather and it gets moved, that's what we call erosion. Okay. All right, so move by wind or by ice or by water, uh, that's erosion. And then that last one, mass wasting, it's just moving earth materials under the influence of gravity. So, like, think of rocks falling down a hill or, mm -hmm. you know, sand sliding down a mountain, something like that, mass wasting. All right, so let's talk about the definition of mechanical weathering, so the physical disintegration of rocks into smaller fragments. So nothing with the chemistry of the rocks or chemically is altered. We just break it into smaller pieces, or weather breaks it into smaller pieces. So like if I started with quartz, I would end with quartz, but just smaller pieces. Exactly. So if I took a rock and I hit it with a hammer and it broke up into a bunch of different pieces, it's still the same rock. Cool. Nothing changed. And there's different types of mechanical weathering, and we're going to talk about all of those in this video. We have frost wedging, exfoliation, thermal expansion, and biological activity. All right, so I think we jump into frost wedging first here with a big question. Why is ice float? Hmm. So uh, from what I know about water is when it freezes, it's really kind of a strange substance because when it freezes, it actually expands. It and does. And it gets bigger, it takes up more volume. Yeah. So you've got the same amount of mass, but a bigger volume. So it's less dense, mm -hmm. right? And then that's why ice floats. Mm -hmm. All right. And so that leads us to something that I know I'm dealing with a lot on my block right now is uh, formation of potholes. Um, and it all has to do with this expansion of water. Yeah, exactly. So we have these freezing and thawing cycles. So as water freezes and then it expands, in cracks and things like that in the road, it kind of breaks apart the road. Mm -hmm. And we have traffic, etc. cetera, uh, moving on the road. Some of those pieces move or erode away, and we end up developing a large hole in the road. Mm -hmm. And like what starts as a little crack, if water gets into it, as it pushes it out further and further, actually pushes the crack bigger and bigger, and then you freeze again, and then you thaw again, freeze and thaw. That whole cycle makes the pothole bigger and bigger. Exactly. So this actually somewhat happens in nature too, and it's called the uh, frost wedging. So mm -hmm. it's not like on a road, but you have it where it's happening like on physical rocks themselves. Exactly. Right, so we know that water is more dense at lower temperatures and ice is less dense than water, right? And then when water freezes, it expands, it seeps inside of cracks, right? And it forces the crack to open wider and wider as uh, it turns to ice. Um, you can see in this picture here too, if you can see my mouse, uh, you've got like a crack in here and water seeps into it and just like we were saying before, it freezes, it pushes it out and it can actually like push rocks over the edge, yep. makes cracks bigger and then all these rocks would fall down towards this bottom here and just basically break down the rock as we Sure. Going. So like we were saying, those rock materials that break off they end up just falling down to the bottom of whatever surface yep. it is. They call it a talus slope. And uh, a lot of times it's these really fractured, really sharp rocks, really yeah. high angles uh, on all the rocks that are present there. Exactly. All right, so we're talking about a new type. We're talking about exfoliation on this one. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, with exfoliation, a lot of times what happens is you've got an igneous pluton, okay, uh, usually granitic. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it's actually under a lot of pressure mm -hmm. underneath the earth. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in certain situations, like we talked about in our last unit, right, like that rock itself gets uplifted, and now it's exposed at the surface, and now it's uh, not under as much pressure as it once was. 
right? And now it actually begins to expand. So when it starts to expand, the overlying layers of rock, right, begin to crack mm -hmm. or break because of the release of pressure. Mm -hmm. And you can actually see this breaking take place in these domes here where they kind of make these sheets. And the sheets break and they slide off as these big sheets and you can actually see like the lines in the rock when they come off. Yeah, and I think we've got some pictures on the next slide so we can kind of see that. Yeah, so here's some examples where you can see all these sheets where all this used to be underground. Mm -hmm. And there's all this pressure pushing down on it, but when it released some of that pressure, it kind of broke off some of those layers just in these big sheets that we see. Yeah. All right, the next one we're going to talk about is thermal expansion. Uh, and we talk about a daily cycle of temperature fluctuations, right? And if we think about a desert, where we know how hot it can be during the day when, uh, when the sun is out, but uh, most people don't know that at night it actually drops down to um, maybe even well below freezing in, yeah. in a lot of deserts. So if we think about a temperature difference between day and night of 80, 90, 100 degrees, something along those lines, that actually affects the rocks and makes them weaker. Yeah, and the rock itself is actually like expanding and contracting a little bit as the day and night goes through those cycles. And you can see in this picture, this is one of the more famous pictures that we see. Uh, this is happening in a desert environment, and uh, you end up getting the rock just cracking just because of temperature mm -hmm. swings. All right, the next one we're going to talk about is biological activity. And we see a lot of this, and we see it in this area, and I think we saw a lot of it in the field trip when we were at Camp Sagawa as mm -hmm. well, where we see rocks that are outcropped at the surface, and there's a lot of vegetation and growth. And trees want to get to soil. They want to get to water for their nutrients. And the uh, roots and things can make their way inside of cracks. And as trees get bigger, um, the roots get bigger, and they slowly pry open. Um, rocks. Yeah, and so we're breaking apart rocks, and uh, animals actually do the same thing. If animals dig, uh, they can dig holes into rocks. Uh, a lot of times you'll have it happen in soils too, mm -hmm. um, but they can actually do it in rocks too. So um, a lot of times it's softer rocks that they do it. It'd be tougher to do it in like granites, but yeah. sandstones would be kind of easier to do. Sure. And that's it. So that's our um, weathering, mechanical weathering introduction here. So uh, go back to uh, the class website and uh, take the mastery quiz. We'll see you guys later. Take care.